commit to this. Not anymore. Brrr, the demon of the ancient world. Welcome to the semi-finals of the World Championship 2022 for BFME 1 on the patch 2.2. It's gonna be a good against evil matchup on a beautiful map, Forts of Eisen, between the white Isengard player Rangel versus the red Gondor player Shanks. So who is this guy, by the way? I mean, he's appearing in every single video of mine. I'm just kidding, it's me. <laughs> I was playing this because I was sick without commentary, so for that reason we will be casting the replay, but hopefully it's going to be at least as enjoyable as watching the POV. Okay, it's a good matchup, I'm also the on-host player in this game, uh, which Gondor actually needs, because you are microing with micro-heavy units like Gondor Knights, Isengard playing most of the time with infantry units, so the goal here for me is to destroy the settlement, and of course for the Isengard faction player Rangel, it's about to defend the settlement. Against Isengard you can open with an Elvin Wood, but you don't want to pick any power point with the Gondor faction until you see the enemy faction. In this case I only knew at the beginning that it's a good evil faction, but you can't tell if it's Isengard or Mordor until you see either a Gollum, Orc or a Urukai. Draw your swords. I mean I'm deciding to fight here because I have the feeling that I can't destroy this Lumber Mill. I think it's gonna be quite tanky for me, so I'm trying to keep my opponent busy around this you know, area. This way I can delay his creeping, which will be important for me later on. The goal is to open with blacksmith, double farm, and then save up for the steeple. You need 800 for that, and, you know, cash floating is a bad thing. So when there is one advice I can give to you guys, is about uh, cash floating. So you want to build stuff the second you have the money for it. The second you, have it, you are 800, you want to build your steeple. You don't want to wait. Every single second matters in high skill gameplay, even 3-5 seconds can actually be game changing because it can determine if you can get a creep, if you can reach a lumber mill, if your opponent might have pikemen already on the field or not. Again, every single second matters. So the golem, uh, not the golem, <laughs> sorry Pippin for calling you golem. The Pippin is going to be sent forward. The main goal here is of course to be annoying, to kill some workers. Isengard Eco is looking good, get a good start into the game but he's wasting here now way too much time. Again, time is something, time is luxury in an RTS games. And you need to be time efficient. So he's chasing my Hobbit with two Uruk. It's already good for me. You know, even if I can't achieve anything with the Hobbit here, I can at least stop him from farming for a few seconds and keep his Uruks busy. That's all I want. Because Isengard should be creeping by now. And in a dream world, you want to combine four Uruks, Warchant, all of them, and then split them two by two to creep two layers simultaneously. But here comes my Gondor Knight. The Uruk pit is gonna be level two by now because. You need to be at least level 2 with the Uruk Pit to be able to recruit some pikemen. It means this mill has zero protection. Trample them all. It's all about farm, uh, farming power points because we want to make sure that we get to the 3 power point power spike ESCP. 3 power points will give us a chance to unlock the Ranger special summon. And for that reason we're gonna skip the heal to get to Ranger even faster. So I'm hopefully able to deny him from creeping here with my Gondor Knights, but Uruks with the Warchan are quite beefy and tanky. But luckily for me, they don't decide to fight against me. They decide to fight against the Vork, Vorks from the creep. Let's see who's gonna get the last hit. It looks like I don't wanna risk the biscuit. <laughs> I'm trampling him. You don't wanna go for a 50-50 situation if you are the stronger part of this fight. You understand? So basically, if you know you will, you will win the fight anyway, there is no reason to take a 50-50 risk. Because if you just keep focusing the layer, he might be able to steal the last hit and that's the last thing you want. Because again, the power points are very important. Hobbit will be revived, of course, and keep pressuring, killing those workers. Very, very important. And pikemen are being sent forward to creep. In 2.22, pikemen can creep solo, but this pikemen not anymore because he got damaged big time. And he's also creeping actually quite decently. It's a good looking base, industry is going to be quite helpful to fill up the base even more because it gives you 300% more eco boost for a short duration. Actually not that short, it is active for 2 minutes, has 4 minutes cooldown. It's actually a very busted ability for the evil factions but they also need it. Because they have an open base which is a huge handicap in, you know, compared to the good factions and for that reason they are having a better eco compared to the good factions. I mean my Hobbit was doing a phenomenal job here. In the meantime, I was also able to deny him from creeping this layer. That's also very important. I go for three Gondor Knights fast for his shields. You need to recruit at least three Gondor Knights to get your stable to level 2, which opens the opportunity to buy the Knight Shield. Knight Shield is a you know, damage reduction versus arrows, mainly. 
Also against Cavalry, but that's not gonna be relevant in this game, in this matchup. It's about being tanky against towers. So when we go inside the bees, we will not be getting killed by the sentry towers in a few seconds. We will be able to hold our ground and tank all of this damage for a you know way longer duration. But of course, as expected, we can't keep up with the map control without having to recruit some soldiers. Luckily for us, the soldiers are countering the pikemen big time. So this matchup, if I'm being honest with you, is easier for Isengard when you master Isengard. When you know what to do with Isengard, you can dominate against Gondor every single time, but it's harder to be mastered. It's easier to play when you play this for the first time as the Gondor faction, not that easy with the Isengard faction because you have to get much more macro play. Gondor is focusing on the micro part, but you as an evil faction or Isengard faction in this case have to be good at macroing. Have to be good at spreading out the map with the pikemen and keeping your pikemen alive also. That's very important. You don't want to feed pikemen versus soldiers because that will feed a lot of power points. Okay, so I'm preparing for a big rush with one, two, three Gondor Knights. We have also shields plus forge bleeds, damage plus dankiness. No heavy armor yet. And power point wise, we have almost the power points for it. Almost for the rangers. That's gonna be quite big. But you can see he's retreating with all the pikemen home. He has also work riders on the field now to counter my soldiers. Rock, paper, scissors. You see soldiers, you go work, work riders. You see pikemen, you go urukai. You know, you basically counter what your opponent is bringing to the table. Okay, so I'm getting to this location because I believe that's a very important location. And I can, you know, peel back to my rangers. I like to siege from this area when I play with Gondor against Isengard. And boom, Rangers summon on your face. Huh? Again, it's about creating momentum, but in the meantime, I'm also losing map control, as you can see and tell, which is not good. Remember what I always say, map control is everything. I'm planning to destroy the Uruk Pit. That's going to be big, by the way, because Uruk Pit level 3 has 50% faster build speed. It means if I destroy this, you will lose 50% build speed. Like Uruks, for example, which normally would come out in 20 seconds, will come in 10 seconds from the Uruk Pit level 3. But if I destroy it, that won't be the case anymore. And I was also able to save my Gondor Knights, it's very important. I mean, I was actually losing one Gondor Knight here at this mill, but I just didn't want to show you because it was embarrassing. <laughs> level 5 Gondor Knights is very important. Each level makes us stronger, but in the meantime, what I like to do is while I'm rushing his base, which means he needs to pay attention to his base, to demolish the buildings in time, you know, to counter my Gondor Knights with the Pikemen, I'm also, I also think it's important to pressure the map simultaneously. So force your opponent into a multitasking challenge. Who is better at multitasking? Because most people, they focus on the one thing but forget about the other thing. So at least even if you can't deal economical damage to the castle of your opponent, you can maybe take over the map control, farm even more power points during the time. And look at our power points. We have now heal, rangers, elves, and almost two power points on top of that. Yet we lost a little bit map control, but it's nothing we can't regain back. And soldiers are actually everywhere. Isengard has still a good looking beast. He will recruit now some eventually some crossbowmen to get this to level two faster. The what determines the amount of experience a building needs to level 2 is the cost of units. So for example, a Uruk pit has to get 1000 worth, resources worth of units before it can hit level 2. You can either make it with 5 Urukai or 2 crossbowmen and 1 Urukai. So 400, 400, 800 plus 200, 1000 or 5 times 200, 1000, you know, quick math. Alright, so again, you see what I'm doing, I'm pressuring with my infantry, the map, and using the cavalry to rush his peace. But unfortunately for me, he has now the white wizard Saruman, who is going to be quite threatening. So we need to be careful. Because one mistake, fireball can actually kill a whole battalion. So when you get clumped in a tiny area like this and he fireballs you, it's gonna be big, you know? Destroy the buildings. The thing what people don't understand um, is that when you give Gondor too much time, it's gonna make it harder for you in late game. Because Gondor even though has not the strongest army in the game in the late game, but has the strongest summons and the strongest eco with the marketplace. So basically, uh, when we get Gandalf on the field later on, it's going to be a walk in the park. We can, you know, run around the map, farm power points, don't trample like this. Uh-oh. Okay, I was able to save it. He also used Warchant. It's fine. As long as you can save one unit from the battalion, it's all good. 
I keep making more infantry and of course also cavalry. That's why I don't have that much money, but it's worth it. You exchange money for map control, but it's like a win-win situation because map control means you get more money and your opponent, which is even more important, gets less money, you know? Okay, so as you can see, the pikemen are being countered by the tower guard soldier combination. And in order to counter this, you need as Isengard, Saruman, Lourdes, or your own pikemen Urukai combination. Another beast rush. Uh, he's not demolishing the buildings in time. And I keep seeing it because it's important. Uh, he demolished the level 3 furnace way too quickly, by the way. And then don't do this either. Because it's quite tanky. It is going to be hard for me to destroy it. It has like 6,000 HP with level 3. Like this one, for example. 5,500 HP. It's way tankier than you think. It can withstand the damage for a long time. Borgs are coming also from this spot. There's also now the Uruk crossbowmen combination. Pikemen with, uh, with the forge blades to counter. Okay, I'm gonna go for another beast rush with the ranger summon. Again, rangers just being summoned to kill the pikemen. And I also saw this crossbowman hiding behind, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I have the vision here. And that's free food, by the way. <laughs> that's free food. It's a common thing. People like to hide their crossbowman at the bottom right, right corner. If me one, I'm being honest with you guys, it's about experience. So when you play more games, you experience like common habits from the players. So we can you can capitalize on that one. You know what I mean? And that's what we are doing. Look, we have six power points in the bank. We could, if you wanted to, go even for the Rangers, uh, for the Eagles, I mean. But let's not do this. Fireball has a limited range. It's also a warning in the description. Can be missed if the target is out of the range. And also that's about experience. You have, you know, after a certain amount of games, if it's gonna miss or not if you know it's gonna miss you will just you just cancel it you know you don't have to commit on that one but luckily this has like a very low cooldown one minute so you can spam it quite frequently five power points because i went for the gandalf the white power point in the white wizard Sarim, gandalf not Saruman, is going to be recruited very soon it's gonna be a fight between the white wizard who is whiter wizard Saruman or gandalf Ranger is doing a good job for the map control, but his big mistake is he doesn't siege me. That means there is zero pressure on my castle, and for that reason I can do what I'm doing all the time. I can go back to base, heal up, pressure again. When you play Isengard, you need to siege fast. You don't want to give Gondor too much time. A wizard arrives precisely when he meets the boys. There comes Mifrandia, the White Rider. Okay, so the Isengard player went for the Field of Fires, and he has even 3 power points on top of that. So he's 17 power points away from his Balrog summon, the demon of the ancient world. That is Lord, almost level 4, by the way, that's quite nice. Level 5 is a very important power spike. And Gandalf has to be careful about Lords. So um, the thing is, Lords can't be everywhere, but Gandalf is quite mobile. And I saw this. He used the Cripple to kill a Gondor Knight just to get experience, and I saw that. I know now he has no cripple, but I also see Saruman coming from the top side. So now I have to make a choice. Do I kill Saruman or Lourdes? And it's, I decide to kill Saruman because it's a way more expensive hero and way more rewarding for me to kill because I get a level and a half just killing the white wizard, which is amazing for me. Each level means more tankiness, more damage output. Also on your abilities, you deal more damage. Boromir being also recruited, Okay, so you can see we are dealing with the Pikeman Urukai combo with the Gondor Knights level 6 and also our own Tower Guard soldier combo. And if that's not going to be enough, you have also Gandalf here bringing leadership to the table, which you can't see in the Palantir, but when you cover your mouse over the picture, it will tell you, okay, leadership bonus to nearby troops, 50% more armor, 100% more combat experience, and also units nearby become invulnerable to fear effects, which is not a big deal against Isengard. Isengard is no fear, but against Mordor, especially, you know, or, or Rohan even, because Rohan has Cloudbreak, has Elaine deal from Aragorn, Mordor, definitely the go-to faction about fear, Screech, three times, two times from the Nazgul, one time from the Witch King. I'm gonna make a transition into the combos. Like, the one thing I can tell you about the patch 2.2 is it's rewarding also infantry playstyle. The cavalry, uh, the mobile factions like Gondor and Rohan were stuck for the multiple years in 1.06 to cavalry only. You would never see them getting... Infantry or combos, in a one-on-one -on -one situation at least, because they were just too slow. So now the infantry is a bit faster, which is a bit more rewarding and also more fun. Because having slow motion units trying to reach out a certain area of the map is just not fun. 
Okay, I mean, we have now the 50-50 split. I mean, maybe Isengard has a bit more map control, like 65%, we have 35 But that's enough for us, because we are about to rush his bees. We have also Eagles available. That's a huge Isengard army, by the way. And we know Lourdes is alive. We know that, and for that reason, we can't approach this army. Look how many Gondor Knights we have. <laughs> Holy guacamole. We have also Ranger Summon, but he's camping too much inside the bees. So at this point, you need to always ask yourself, do I commit to this? Or do I use this momentum to do something else? It's all about APM. Increasing your APM, making decisions, fast decisions. Because every second, the circumstances might be different. The game might change. I'm going to choose to commit to this. But fortunately for Isengard, he fireballed two of my eagles with one fireball. <laughs> you know, double kill for the young wizard Saruman. He also got a whole level and a half from this. Killing certain units, including Eagles, is just rewarding. You also get a lot of power points from it. So Isengard has now 7 power points in the bank. He also went for the Tainted Land. Which is a mistake from him, in my opinion, because I didn't go for the second Elven Wood. I just used it for the first time in the, at the beginning of the game and never used it afterwards. Tainted Land is a thing you don't choose until you have to choose. So until you see Gondor abusing the land and keep spamming it all over the place, then you can choose it. But just choose it to have it is not very smart or not very good because it will delay your Balrog. Remember, the Balrog is what you are trying to get to when you play Isengard or Mordor. The same also for Gondor Rohan, the EOT is what you are trying to get to. And you want to do this in the fastest possible way. This will slow it down. Okay, so for, for that reason, for example, you will not you will not see me picking, you know, Rangers or Endro Hirim, or you will not see me picking Eagles in cloud break before I pick AOD. After the Eagles, I want to go to AOD ASAP. Barracks level 3, Archer range almost level 3. I have a huge infantry army over here. At this point, I'm just trying to fish some power points with Gandalf, who's almost level 8. And Gandalf is a power point farming machine, boys. So when you play it in a, in a, in a smart way, you can actually, you know, farm a lot of power points with Gandalf. Good players won't allow you to blast them. They will always pay attention to the pikemen, they will always disengage to not give you free experience. But then you can always use lightning sword or easter light. Easter light can't be dodged. I just use easter light here for example, you see how many works I killed. So even when he's paying attention, you can use this every minute. And this deals hella damage, <laughs> so you can... He missed the warm tongue by the way. Dude, guys, I can, I can tell you one thing. When you watch replays like this in 2.22, the game is feeding so fast, right? But in multiplayer, it's not like this, you know, <laughs> it's not like this. The multiplayer is slowing the gaming experience quite a lot. This is kind of too fast in the replay commentary. But when you play it yourself in actual gameplay, in multiplayer, it doesn't feel that fast. Look, he's, you see, good players won't let you blast them for free. He's always paying attention, but that's why you force him into a choice. You either destroy his building or you kill his units. And he can't protect both of them at the same time. Oh, but now you can dodge anymore. Boom, son. It's a beautiful one, boys. Boom, level 8, I believe, right? Let me check. I can't click on you, my friend. Okay, level 8. Good. I think that has like an army around the top right side. Um, the one thing you can't or you shouldn't do is to split your lords and Saruman from each other. Because if you have Saruman in one location where lords isn't, then I, when I, and I see that, then I can always come with my Gandalf and kill your Saruman. You need lords to counter my Gandalf Ideally, with your wizard Saruman together. So what you need are like three combos. That's like a little bit too much. Three combos with Lord Saruman. This guy is even level 5. He's actually very, very strong now. And then you want to have like two Warc Riders, a couple of pikemen for the map control fight. Then you capture this outpost. It looks like I'm giving advice to my opponent, but it's I, I want them to improve. I want them to become the champion in the following tournaments. Then you pike, buy the outpost with your five combos. Lord Saruman leadership. You, st you siege. You force Gondor to fight an unfavorable fight for it. Because I can't fight against 5 combos with Lourdes and Saruman leadership. That's not possible. But if you make this mistake to split them up a little bit. Because now I see this guy in the middle. I see where Lourdes is. That's what good um, you know, Gondor players need to always keep track about. Know always where Lourdes is. That's very important. If you know where he is, you need to be on in the opposite side. You don't want to be close to Lourdes. It's a mystique. Eagles are almost back up. Almost. 
and Rangel has 11 power points collected after the fuel defiers. Three war riders, they have not been doing much, they were camping in the bees. Of course, the later the game goes on, the more macro is required. The more you need to, you know, control multiple different units, armies, heroes, simultaneously. I'm gonna keep my distance and use lightning swords. I know there is lords, I don't wanna get close to lords. And wargs are forced to disengage. So I, I see now the army coming from the top side, right? I saw them, um, or I will see them now. So I see where he is. Saruman, again, I know where Lourdes is. Saruman is so far away from Lourdes, it's a huge mistake. And boom. He got a beautiful fireball off, but he got killed. And that's a no-go. Look, the boom. And look how many power points I got. Just from this one single fight. I killed so much stuff. That's what Gandalf can do if you don't pay attention. Now, EOD is unlocked from the spellbook. Which is amazing, of course. And uh, my opponent still needs over 5 power points for his own Balrog. I have a huge calf army, and I also have like a very strong infantry army. Even though my Boromir and Faramir, they don't provide leadership yet, but Faramir needs only a level, even less than that, to unlock his armor. Now he's coming to the bottom side. But imagine if this army would also include Saruman. Imagine if Gondor wouldn't have the EOD. Orcs are, you know, trying to pressure. Here's the top side, and there is control with three furnaces around the outpost, getting decent amount of money. But he also needs to spend money non-stop. Um, he's committing to this. When you commit to this, by the way, as Isengard, you want to kill this well first. It's extremely important. If you don't kill the well, they will keep healing up. I know I have AOD, so I commit to this fight. I'm going to use AOD. Kill everything that he has here, including Lourdes. Because he used the um, Palante before. Palante is on cooldown. So Lourdes shouldn't be able to disengage. AOD duration is quite short. It's a little bit too short. So we buffed also in the previous, uh, in the upcoming patches. So he has to make a choice. Either he stops and dies to EOD, or he doesn't stop and dies to Gondor Knights. He dies anyway. Saruman is almost back on the field. And that's the thing, right? You need to invest so much money to get your heroes back. And now we can commit. So double combo, Faramir, level 5 now. Boromir is only level 3.5, but half a level, you can easily get that. We know Lutz is dead, we just killed him. He was level 5. Level 5 revive time is 2 minutes, which is quite long. That's why losing high leveled heroes is quite punishing because the higher level the hero is boom the most likely you will lose him destroy the uruk pit lightning sword i saw saruman coming so i want to cancel this because saruman fireball if you don't know chunks gandalf a lot if you face tank it if you face against saruman he fireballs you this hurts this hurts actually a lot you see with palantir Sar saruman is zooming and I want to get to get end of level 10. Boom. What of power unlock, boys. Just that's what we do. And you shall not pass, son. That's what Gandalf does. The Gandalf incident. May the best wizard win. Saruman level 8. That's good. Lord's almost back on the field. But again, 2 minutes revive time is a long time. We are talking about an RTS game, and this one is a fast-paced game too. So even 1 minute is a long time. So losing heroes, quite punishing. We have a lot of power points collected, but Isengard now has the power points for his own Balrog. The thing about Isengard and also Mordor is that you gather power points for losing units as well. So basically, if you lose Saruman, you get actually 2 power points. <laughs> so if you would lose Saruman 10 times, you would get 20 power points. That's why you need eco, because then when you lose them, you can revive them all the time. It's about the time, though. You lose time, which is more punishing for evil than the money. Boom, boom, wombo combo. Faramir, warning arrow, Gandalf, Easter light. That's enough to kill the white wizard. But is it enough to kill the demon of the ancient world? Balrog is looking for Gandalf. Gandalf can't fight against Ga um, Balrog. Because you need to, in order to kill him, you need to light, uh, you need to land your lightning sword fully, exclusively on him. Then afterwards, you want to use Easterly, which is on cooldown. So I can't. I just can't. Okay. So he knows. He can't catch me. Gandalf is extremely mobile. You cannot catch him unless, you know, you land somehow on him. And um, the whip can one-shot Gandalf. The whip is basically like a counterplay to Gandalf. Because otherwise, Gandalf will always would be kill, able to kill, uh, you know, this dude. Look, the wings have no cooldown, you can keep flying all the time. So you can summon him here, and then you can fly all the way to this sp spot. 
Faramir, I can take this. No, you can't, Faramir. No, you can't. He has been burned alive, but he's used to that from his daddy, right? All right, big commitment with the Cloud Break. Gandalf, Water of Power has a long cooldown. Actually, 4 minutes and 30 seconds, if I'm not mistaken. If I'm not mistaken, it's a long cooldown. And now we just killed Lourdes. The only counter Isengard can offer to our Gandalf. So we can commit, kill the Orphank, which was not destroyed in the films actually the ends couldn't destroy it but this is not the film this is the game in which easter delight will be able to finish off the the wizard tower from saruman the base is falling apart what a fast game do the game do i'm telling you guys the replays are kind of crazy man normally when i play this game doesn't feel that fast i'm telling you guys replays is like you watch a game it's like when you're watching a video in like 2.x speed it's unbelievable Guys, again, please let me know in the comment section down below if you enjoy the replay cast more or if you enjoy the POV, you know, the, the own gameplay, uh, you know, with commentary more. This one is more relaxing for me, to be honest with you. <laughs> this one, I can do this all day, you know. Big commitment. Go, go, go. Almost what of power for the second time. Boom. Not even heavy armor, by the way, on this Uruks. Yeah, Isengard has not that much money anymore. Uh, this is not rewarding if you have no lumber mills and you have only one. That's not going to be enough. Full map control for the red condo player. The settlement is going down. And that's a Gandalf show, ladies and gentlemen. It's a Gandalf show. Didn't lose him single time. Professional Gandalf player. What can I say? <laughs> but we have the white wizard. That has to be good for something. And Pippin, that what Gandalf is good for, my friend. Flexing a little bit with the War of Power. You know, just why not? And that's gonna be the game, boys. GG well played. Get all the army of Gondor. And we will see the glory days of Gondor once more. I hope you guys enjoyed this game in this video. If you did, you know what to do. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a truck. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.